let's get started. So first we will uh, kind of have Jian Feng to give us the introduction and the welcome. Uh, Jian Feng Gao is a distinguished scientist at MSR and the IEEE Fennel SM Distinguished uh, Fennel. He is leading the deep learning group uh, at MSR and also he's my previous manager and mentor. Um, <laughs> let me see. So Jian Feng has very, very broad interest and uh, kind of the deep learning team exploring in many different uh, research directions like multimodal intelligence, we will talk uh, today, uh, conversation uh, systems, and uh, many, many other kind of research topics. Uh, welcome Jian Feng to give us a welcome. So Jian Feng, it's your time. Yeah, uh, by the way, can you see me? Yeah, we can see you. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I cannot see myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, good morning or good evening, <laughs> depending on where you are. Um, I'm Jian Feng Gao from Microsoft Research. Uh, today, it is my great pleasure uh, to give an opening to welcome you all to the workshop on uh, computer vision in the wild or CV in the wild. We have a very tight schedule with many wonderful talks, so I will keep my opening brief. Happen next. Yeah, one of the fundamental research questions of uh, artificial intelligence is how to measure intelligence. Right? If we measure intelligence in terms of a scale on a particular task, then I would say AI models already outperform humans in many tasks, ranging from switchboard speech recognition, machine translation, to image classification on ImageNet. However, if we measure intelligence in terms of skill acquisition of efficiency, then despite the recent breakthroughs of deep learning, humans still learn much more efficiently than computers in terms of energy consumption and the amount of uh, supervisions needed to learn to perform a task. Okay, next. Oh, over the um, past, last five years, we have witnessed many AI breakthroughs uh, towards building AI systems with human level intelligence. And these efforts can be roughly uh, grouped into two categories. That is uh, new AI modeling techniques and the new AI benchmarks. Taking computer vision or CV as an example, on the modeling side, we see a uh, we see a trend of consolidating many task specific uh, CV models into a few unified foundation models. All right, next. And task specific uh, CV models are developed by following the standard machine learning pipelines. That is, for each task, we collect training data, evaluation data, then train the evaluate task specific models on these data sets and deploy these models in real world applications, right? Because each task is so specific and the training data and the model architecture for one task typically cannot be used for another. For example, image classification needs images with labels, uh, while object detection requires a bounding box for each object to be labeled. And a new architecture such as a fast region-based convolutional neural network. As a result, there are many silos developed in the CV community. Although state-of-the-art task-specific models often outperform humans on individual CV tasks, such as ImageNet classification, they are far less efficient than humans uh, to learn to perform new tasks. Next. Yeah, to improve the cost efficiency of AI modeling, Large-scale foundation models have been developed uh, using massive compute resource and uh, data. Uh, typically, a foundation model is per trend uh, using self-supervision at scale on broad data, and then can be efficiently uh, adapted to a wide range of downstream tasks. Uh, examples of foundation models, including uh, GP3 and tooling, uh, for natural language tasks and the clips line and Florence for computer vision tasks. Next. And uh, as an example, 
uh, Microsoft's Florence model is portrayed on massive image test uh, data using cons constructive learning. And the heart of the model is the image encoder and the language encoder that are called trained to form the semantic layer that unifies diverse computer vision tasks through language. And equipped by the semantic layer and the adaptation models built on top of it, such as the object uh, detection head. The Florence model has shown very impressive capacities of adapting to new tasks in zero short and few short learning settings. Next. And among many uh, computer vision tasks, the challenge of this workshop focuses on two well-established tasks, image classification and the object detection. The image classification on the left-hand side is an image level prediction task when an AI model classifies the image to one or more predefined classes, such as those defined in the MNIST and the ImageNet benchmarks. Object detection, on the other hand, is a reading level prediction task when an AI model needs to locate and label salient objects in the image. Uh, like image classification, many object detection benchmarks use a predefined set of object uh, categories. Next. However, in real world applications, we often need to detect hundreds of thousands of uh, objects that are unseen in training data. We call this, these tasks uh, computer vision in the wild or CV in the wild. Our mission is to develop AI models for computer in the vision in the wild tasks. Next. And this workshop is uh, a collaborative community effort to benchmark the state-of-the-art computer vision foundation models. Many teams, as I listed here, have made a substantial contributions to the workshop by organizing and participating in the challenge, submitting and reviewing papers and providing suggestions and helps. The workshop is not possible without your contribution. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And next. Now let's go over the workshop, uh, go over the agenda uh, today. It's a full day agenda. In the morning session, uh, the first invite invited talk will be given by Professor Xiaolong Wang from UCSD. He will talk about uh, robot perception in the wild. Then we have three uh, conspicuous talks from the Google Brain Zurich team, given by Neil Xiaohua and uh, uh, massage, uh, respectively. Uh, this team, this Google team, has made several fundamental contributions to advance the state of art in computer vision, including vision transformer or VIT, and the scaling VIT to many uh, computer vision and the vision language tasks, and the studies on dense computer vision prediction tasks. Uh, taking together. The three presentations given by the team provide an excellent tutorial on some of the most important topics uh, in computer vision. Then Chun Yuan Li from uh, Microsoft Research will give a report uh, of the CV in the wild challenge, followed by a series of presentations given um, by the winners of the challenge. Then we will take a lunch break and then resume the workshop at 1.30. Uh, PM, Israel time. Next. There are two sessions in the afternoon. Uh, in the first session, uh, Aisha uh, Misra from Meta will talk about the general purpose uh, vision recognition systems. Then uh, Dr. Yongqing Xian from Google will present his work on zero shot image classification by learning unsupervised semantic embeddings. Uh, session one ends with the spotlight presentations uh, of our workshop papers. And after one hour break, uh, the second uh, afternoon session starts with a talk 
by Professor Kate Sinkel from Boston University. She will present her recent work on domain shift. Uh, you may notice recently, uh, Xing Cui and uh, his collaborators have produced uh, very promising results on open cell recognition computer vision tasks, including detection, segmentation, and the video classification. I really look forward to learning his latest work from his talk. Uh, our last speaker is uh, Stella Yu. I learned that Professor Yu uh, recently moved from uh, UC Berkeley to University of Michigan. I believe that her talk, Learning Mid-Level Vision from Nothing But Data, will give a perfect ending of the workshop and inspire a lot of post-workshop discussions. Next. Uh, now let's enjoy the workshop. Thank you.